Hey guys, it's Josh from Bomb and Lawyers, and today we're here with another episode of the Travelling Lawyer Vlog. So, this week, um, today being uh, Tuesday, uh, I'm heading straight out to Bow Desert at the moment. I've got a uh, matter out there involving a high range speed offence, possession of cocaine, possession of a drug utensils, namely like a cannabis grinder, uh, and possession of a knife. So he's gone out with a bang, this kid, and um, and I'll be doing that matter today at uh, Bow Desert. I also had another quite serious matter today at Caloundra. However, I obviously can't be in Caloundra and Bow Desert at the same time, so I got one of my uh, um, barristers who I work very closely with. He's just spoken to him. He's headed up to Caloundra now. He's almost there. Um, he's got a client who is on two disqualified drives and an evasion offence. Now, uh, serious offences, in particular the evasion offence, which can carry a period of um, uh, jail time, um, uh, either a mandatory period of jail time or an, a significantly high uh, fine. So we're pushing for the high fine today. But the problem, this client has a terrible history. He's already got three disqualified drives behind him and several other indiscretions at the law. So hopefully um, we can keep him out of jail today. But the barrister's got that brief. He's up there at Caloundra today. And fingers crossed for him because that's going to be touch and go. Tomorrow I'm in Manly Local Court in Sydney. Uh, I've got a uh, mid-range drink drive there. The client's on his second drink driving offence. Last one was four years ago. Um, so, you know, hasn't learned his lesson after the first occasion. Uh, so I'll be uh, jumping on the Manly Ferry uh, tomorrow morning to get out to Manly. That should be that should be fun. Always a good way to commute to work. Thursday I've got off. Um, and then... Uh, Friday, I'm at the Southport Magistrates Court on a high-range drink driving offence, an old client of mine who has unfortunately been going through a really tough time, and he's gone and made a mistake again. Represented him about six, seven years ago on a uh, drink drive, but um, he's gone out with a bang this time with a, a high-range offence. Travelling through Surface Paradise on a scooter late at night to go visit a friend, um, so he got pulled up and um, uh, it, it was clearly well, well, well affected by alcohol. <clears throat> so that's this week. Um, yeah, a few things on uh, and um, I'll keep you posted. Transition. So I'm just outside Bow Desert Magistrates Court uh, where I've appeared for my client today who was charged with a high range speeding offence. It's travelling at 137 kilometres an hour in an 80 zone. Uh, when pulled over by police, they also uh, did a search on him. They found 0.7 of a gram of cocaine in his possession, along with a cannabis grinder to chop up cannabis leaf, uh, and also possession of a knife. It was a pretty serious looking dagger, actually. Um, pleas, early pleas of guilty were entered. He was obviously caught red-handed. Um, there was not much point in trying to defend the matter because there was really no defence to this, um, these offences. Um, he has got a very poor traffic record. He's on his P2s, provisional driver's licence. Poor traffic record, about 10 entries over the last two years. But thankfully he's got no prior criminal record behind him. So today, we, well, he went and got a He's got good family support. His mum was here today. She gave a, a letter up to be tendered to the court. He, uh, our client wrote a letter of apology to the court. He's only a young man. He's 20 years of age. He's had some um, challenges in his life. Pre previously diagnosed with ADHD when he was young, but he hasn't taken the medication for the last five or six years because um, it, it just doesn't agree with him. There's a number of side effects come from that but the trade-off is that he's had some um, social and behavioral problems such as the matters before court today um, so anyway he was um, uh, he's got good family support he did the Queensland traffic defenders program got those letters uh, and we also got a letter uh, or an email printout showing that he has taken a first step of 
booking in to see a psychiatrist in two weeks time so you know, addressing his mental health problems he's not working at the moment he was involved in a serious accident motor vehicle accident mind you about two years ago where he broke his femur his leg he's had to learn to um, walk and rehabilitate again and that's what the magistrate said driving at 137 kilometers an hour after going through the trauma that he's been through the magistrate said you must have rocks in your head but thankfully he's uh, woken up and he's um he's taken some good steps to address his offending behavior um i think this will be a wake-up call for him we were seeking that um the magistrate deal with the speeding fence by way of a fine um uh, in relation to the drug possession and the drug utensils possession we were seeking that our client be referred through to a drug diversion program and a small fine for the possession of a knife magistrate agreed with us he gave um, our client an $1,800 fine for the high range speeding offence it usually comes with a ticketable offence of $1,650 so um, just due to his inexperience and how high the the uh, speed was he, he whacked an extra 150 on top compared to what the ticket offense is he agreed with us that um, the drug offenses should be directed to uh, drug diversion which means our client was put on a, a good behavior bond or a reconnaissance where uh, for six months so if he breaches that good behavior within the next six months he will be liable to pay $800 and he's got to do a telephone drug diversion call um, and on top of that, he got a $500 fine for the possession of a knife and no conviction was recorded. So his criminal record does remain clear. No convictions recorded. He does have a few bills to pay off. Uh, but hopefully this is the last of his offending and he can um, grow up and uh, move forward with the good support of his family behind him. Thanks for tuning in here at Bow Desert Magistrate's Court today. Bit of footage from the local photo at War Memorial. Um, not the biggest you've ever seen, but a few uh, little uh, bits and pieces from their military uh, presentation. And um, yeah, shortly I'll be uh, taking off down to Sydney to do a manly local court matter. So I've just got to Circular Quay, that's where the ferries um, go from, uh, from the CBD. Uh, yeah, this morning I've got the Manly Local Court matter, so about to jump on a ferry, uh, cruise across the pond over the, to the other side to where Manly is uh, to do my matter this morning. It's such a beautiful way to get commute to work. Um, going past you know the Sydney the famous Sydney Harbour Bridge uh, Sydney Opera House 
sky's looking a little grey, so it looks like there could be a spot of rain, but it's, um, it's still a beautiful way to um, uh, get to work in the morning. So we're going to our manly local court matter this morning, and we'll see how we go. Hey guys, I'm just outside Manly Local Court. It's absolutely bucketing down, so I will be trying. I'll try and be quick with this uh, case summary. But today I've appeared on a middle range drink driving offence. It was a 0.095, but it was our client's. Or it was his third drink driving offence, and uh, second within the last five years. Um, he had a matter in 2021. Uh, that was a mid-range and yeah, he's back before the court again. Unfortunately, hasn't learned his lesson um, on a 0.095 mid-range offence. The facts of the matter were that in February, he'd been at his uh, best friend's wedding at Collaroy. Uh, he'd then, after the wedding, gone to Manly to have some um, uh, post-wedding drinks. He was drinking from about 2 p.m. till 10 p.m. at night. He'd planned on staying at his workplace uh, nearby in Manly Vale. He'd driven his car, left it there, got a lift over to the wedding, uh, and then at the end of the night got a lift back to his workplace, where he uh, proceeded to go to sleep on the couch, the work couch. Very uncomfortable, slept out four hours, got up just before three, felt a lot better, decided to get in the car to drive home to where he lives at uh, Clareville. Um, on the way there, pulled over for a random breath test. Nothing significantly aggravated about the matter. Uh, sole occupant of the vehicle, uh, RBT, um, uh, reading was towards the lower end of the mid-range category. Um, yeah, so I in the vehicle, no passengers, very uh, limited, um, minimal traffic on the road. Um, and uh, police mentioned in the fact sheet that he was uh, cooperative with them and showed immediate remorse. He, he, he knew he was in hot water. Um, and um, he's entered an early plea of guilty today. Now, he, he works as a builder. He's got pre-existing difficulties with his business and being put off the road, this has just compounded those issues to the point where he's looking to probably wind up his business and move up to um, the central coast uh, in the next month or so. Minimal tra um, public transport up there and he has struggled uh, being off the road. He's got a partner who's pregnant um, and that in itself has come with a lot of complications and uh, stresses because relationships kind of on again, off again. We, uh, he did do the traffic defenders program, but as the magistrate did uh, mention, that uh, less weight could be given to completing that program because um, he'd already done it before, only a couple of years ago, and clearly hadn't learned his lesson. Still, she mentioned it didn't go against him, but um, it held less weight than if he had a, never done it before. Um, we were seeking for a reduction in disqualification, and the magistrate agreed she did reduce it down to the minimum period of six months for a mid-range second offence, um, or second offence in the last five years, but it was his third overall. Uh, so six months, it was backdated to February when the charge occurred. Um, $600 fine and he does have to do the mandatory interlock program for two years um, and he was also put on a good behaviour bond for 12 months. Um, pretty reasonable outcome today given his record was so poor um, and it's kind of what the outcome that I expected that we would get today. Thanks for tuning in here at the very very wet Manly Local Court. So the rains hit hard. I look like a dra absolute drowned rat. I got absolutely pumped by the rains. Here comes my ferry. Gonna take me back over to the CBD. Could be a bit of a rough and windy um, ride back over to the city, but um, you gotta take the good with the bad. Some days it's sunny and shining, other days it's terrible like this. And I also came across this nice little food market that was on at Circular Quay today. Um, got myself a nice little feed. Then it was time to hit the gym and work off those calories. Uh, I usually go to the Virgin Active Gym uh, in the Pitt Street Mall. It's a phenomenal gym. It's got pool, sauna, spa, 
um, all the equipment, everything you could possibly want. Now it's time to head home. A bit of footage of the beautiful Gold Coast beach and that's the sort of the main high-rise strip surface paradise you can see there uh, as we come in to um, land down on the southern part of the Gold Coast at Coolangatta Airport. Uh, Josh here outside uh, Southport Magistrates Court. Appeared on a, uh, a bit of a serious matter today. It was a high range drink drive, 0.204 was the reading. So a very high reading. Unfortunately, it wasn't my client's first drink drive. He, I represented him here in 2019 and also in 2017. Um, but he's back before the court on probably the highest reading he's had out of all of those um, uh, prior alcohol related traffic offences. Um, the facts of the matter were at um, about 1am early in April, uh, he'd been at home, home alone drinking by himself um, and uh, his mental health began to decline um, due to a marriage breakdown he was going through. He reached out to a friend, his friend said, listen, come over to my place, I'm in surface, you can stay the night and I'll look after you um, and, uh, and give, give you some support. Stupidly, uh, he uh, finished up his last drink, jumped on his um, moped scooter and took off um, from Mermaid Beach and drove to Surface Paradise. He was seen to do an illegal U-turn in Surface. Police took up with him, breath tested him. His breath uh, result, his breath test result was 0.164 on the roadside. But then when he was finally put back on the final breath analysis, um, instrument it was 0.204 so it had clearly risen between the time he was driving and the final breath test but the final breath test is the um, evidentiary breath test that um, or breath analysis result that uh, the court can only rely upon um, but it was clear that he was uh, his alcohol um, reading was on the rise um, uh, since he just finished up his last drink just before he got on the bike. In any event, it was always going to be high range. Um, so those issues were taken into account by the court today. Um, so uh, why my client's back here? He's back here because he's been going through a terrible time over the last couple of years. He's been put into bankruptcy. He's lost everything. He's had to sell his house. He's been going through a marriage breakdown. He's been suffering from um, mental health and emotional issues and it all just came to a head on this particular night made a very stupid decision um, last year uh, he was unemployed and uh, alcohol really became a dependency uh, in his life an issue in his life he did reach out to get some um, counseling from lives live well group as well as the quinn rehabilitation group um, but then he thought he was better early this year he got new employment things were getting back on track um, but unfortunately he fell off the wagon and had a massive relapse on this night. He has since the offence re-engaged with those counselling and rehabilitation um, services. He did the traffic offender program again, um, but yeah, we were uh, seeking some um, leniency in relation to his matter today. We asked for a period of nine uh, 9 to 10, 11 months. Um, magistrate agreed that 9 months was reasonable given he'd served one month off the road already. Um, the police had failed to issue a notice to allege certificate categorising him as a repeat offender, which they could have done because the last offence uh, fell within inside the last five years by a matter of three or four months. Um, but they failed to issue that certificate. So the magistrate, which if they had have alleged he was uh, a repeat or prior, had a prior offence, the minimum period would have been 12 months. But because they didn't do that, the minimum period was six months. Um, but still, due to his prior indiscretions and how high the reading was, um, he was never gonna get the minimum, but the magistrate still gave him nine months today, $1,000 fine. 
he's going to have to do the interlock program. But uh, an extremely uh, good result for our client today. Um, certainly there was a risk that he could have got probation, suspended sentence or something a lot heftier or, or even, you know, 18 months off the road. But um, uh, I think the magistrate took a bit of pity on our client, sympathy for him due to the issues he's been dealing with and can see that he is taking positive steps to address his problems. So uh, very good outcome here at Southport Magistrates Court today and um, thanks for tuning in. So that's a wrap for uh, this episode of the Travelling Lawyer Vlog. This week we hit Bow Desert Magistrates Court. We then hit Manly Local Court in Sydney and then back to the Gold Coast to hit uh, Southport Magistrates Court. Varying matters of um, different facts and, and results, but we're, we're happy with all the results we got this week. Clients were really happy and um, a couple of repeat clients there, um, but hopefully they'll learn their lesson after um, being back before the court and getting a bit of leniency and out a, a good outcome. Um, I'm gonna wrap up with a bit of footage um, from this uh, weekend that um, I, I went along to the, uh, the Fisher concert, um, out to lunch uh, concert at uh, the um, at Coolangatta Beach. It was phenomenal. A bit of footage here. And see you next episode on the Travelling Lawyer Vlog. See you later. For tuning into Borman Lawyers today, you can catch us at any of the usual social media platforms. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, and if you've got any questions or queries, please don't hesitate to contact us on 1300 941 900. Hey guys, thanks for tuning into this video today. I really hope it was informative and helpful for you. There's another couple of videos below that you might want to check out that may be very useful for the process that you might be going through at the moment. Please feel free to like, follow, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel because we've always got fresh new content coming through all the time.